praise the Lord God of Israel. Now we're going to have uh, the reading of the law. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, in it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Praise the Lord. Now we're going to go to Ecclesiastes 12, and we're going to read verses 12 and 13 and 14. This way. Go ahead. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now we'll read from Revelation 22, verses 14 to the 16. 14 to the 16. Okay, go ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments, mm -hmm. that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. Praise the Lord God of Israel for the reading of the word. And we open every Sabbath day with the Lord's law and letting you know that the only way to get into God's kingdom is keep the commandments of God, my people. Amen. Amen. The commandments is the key. Don't never let nobody tell you the commandments ain't no more because they're trying to take your crown. But uh, hey, for those that don't know me, my name is Brother Ray. I'm one of the teachers from the Israel of God and I am uh, glad to be able to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. Amen. And, uh, you know, the word of God is, is full of wisdom and knowledge and understanding people. And we're living in the times that the Lord said in the last days, he going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. Your old men are going to dream dreams and see visions. Upon my servants, upon my handmaid, in those days will I pour out of my spirit. And guess what time it is? These are the days we're living in. This is the time, I'm talking about men and women, to get into your Bible and the Lord is pouring out his spirit. And we're going to give you a little portion of it today. We're dealing with this 
thing, the title of the day is called Wisdom, a Spiritual Woman from God. Wisdom, a Spiritual Woman from God. And you know, uh, when you talk about a virtuous woman and stuff, we know about the virtuous woman in Proverbs 31. But here's another woman that the Lord is sending you that everybody need to take and spend some time with. And we're going to share that with you today. But uh, we're going to start with, in, with the brother that was, had that title of claiming to be the wisest man that ever lived. And let's see how he operated and maybe we can get some understanding on how we can get some wisdom and knowledge for ourselves. But like I say, the title is Wisdom, a uh, Spiritual Woman from God. And we're going to start this in Proverbs, the first chapter, and we're going to start at verse 20. Proverbs 1 and 20. Y'all make sure y'all write these scriptures down so you can go up at your own convenience. Because this will help you if you just listen. But the Lord say, uh, let the Spirit, let the churches hear what the Spirit have to say to the churches. You understand what I'm saying? So now, Proverbs 1 and 20. Okay, brother, when you get it, go ahead and read. Wisdom crieth without. Uh-huh. She uttereth her voice in the street. Now, hold on for a minute. Uh, can y'all give me a little more mic on the reader? Because I want this word to be heard. I ain't doing it but doing some talking. He got that uncut. We got to be up. He got to be heard. Say testing. Wisdom crieth without. Good. Okay. Go she ahead. uttered her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief places of concord. Uh-huh. In the opening of the gates. In the city, she uttered her words, saying. She uttered her words, saying. She cried in the chief place of concord. But what do you see? At every time you see some crime, killing, rape, stabbing, she crying and telling you to stop. Keep the commandments. Stop this foolishness. But is anybody listening? But he said, did you hear her word? We talking about a woman here, and we going to show you. But go ahead and read. How long, ye simple ones, uh -huh. will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning. Uh -huh. And fools hate knowledge. Lord, how long is this going to be now? How long do you think you can just go to church on Sunday, leave $20 on the table, and think you're going to heaven? How long are you going to deal with that kind of foolishness? And he said, and fools hate knowledge. So if I hate knowledge, what am I? The book said that's what I am. But now, listen to what he said now. What verse you at? That was the end of 22. Read. Turn ye at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. This is how you know this woman is from God, because she's going to do what? Pour out his words unto you and make his words known unto you. And this is what it's all about. This is what makes this woman so special. She coming with God's word, and that's the only thing that can heal you. But keep reading. Because I have called, and ye refused. Uh -huh. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded it. What? You mean the Lord have called on you, and you refused? He didn't stretch out his hand, and you studied turning it down? Something is wrong. But this is what's going on in the world. Everybody's got it. Oh, I can't deal with you right now, man. I got something else. I said, okay, then. The day going to come, you're going to want to deal with it. I bet you that. Yes, sir. But go ahead and read. But ye have said it not all my counsel, uh -huh. and with none of my reproof. You don't want to hear no counsel from the Lord? You don't need no reproof from God? You, you that sharp? Is that what's happening? Or maybe you deceive in yourself. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. I also will laugh at your calamity. Uh -huh. I will mock when your fear cometh. Go ahead. When your fear cometh as a desolation, uh -huh. and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. Go ahead. When distress and anguish cometh upon you. What time is this? When is we going to mourn and anguish going to come upon us? This is talking about the abomination that make it desolate people. When that great tribulation comes, if you don't know the Lord, you're going to find yourself in a place like it never was before and it never shall be again. With no knowledge. That's a terrible time, ain't it, brother? Mm. But he said, when you call me, I ain't going to hear you. I'm going to refuse you just like you did me. Go ahead and read. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. What? They shall, they shall call upon me, but I will not answer. Uh huh. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Because it's going to come a time, the Lord says, it's going to be a famine in the land, not for food or for drink, but for hearing the word of God. 
Ain't that so? So you got to make this thing right now. You got to seek the Lord while he may be found. But when, you know, he said, because when I called, you didn't answer. And you got to seek me early that you can find me. But keep reading. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. If you hate knowledge, what, are you a wise man or are you a fool? Go ahead and read. They were none of my counsel. Uh -huh. They despised all my reproof. They just all of the reproof. They all my reproof. They didn't want to hear none of the word of God. And this is where we come to, people. And then they turn around and say, why are we in trouble? This is the reason right here. But now, let's go a little further. Let's go right over to the second. We're going to be in Proverbs a lot this afternoon. But turn over to Proverbs 1. And we're going to, Proverbs 2 and verse 1. And we're going to see what the wisest man that ever lived said. And he's talking about this spiritual woman that come from God. Let's see what he say about it. Two and one, what did it say? My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee. Oh, I thought the commandments were no more. Go ahead and read. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom. Oh, that's what you got to cry your ear to. You, that wisdom, go ahead, read. And applying thine heart to understanding. What's your heart, people? It's your mind. Go ahead and read. Yeah, if thou criest after knowledge uh -huh. and lifted up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures. See, you got to search for this woman. She precious. She got some stuff that we need. We got to look for. Just like if you thought if a, a billion dollars was in your backyard, you wouldn't go out there and dig a couple of shelves. Man, I couldn't find it. Man, you did the whole yard up bringing dumps and trucks and all. Hey, because, but that's the same way you got to get in this word. You got to dig in this word and you'll find her. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord uh -huh. and find the knowledge of God. Oh, that's when you're going to find it, when you dig for it. But what if I'm reading two or three scriptures every year? Am I digging or am I fooling myself? Fooling yourself. Go ahead and read. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Uh huh. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. You better know it. Go ahead. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. Yes, sir. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Because if you walk into this world to keep the commandments, anybody that try to come into you, guess you, the Lord will buckle them people. Yeah. The book says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous flee unto it and are safe. But go ahead and read a little bit more. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Oh, that's the one that's keeping the way of the saints. Skip down to verse 29, continue. That thou mayest walk in a way of good men uh -huh. and keep the paths of the righteous. Yes, sir. For the upright shall dwell in the land and the perfect shall remain in it. That's right, the upright gonna dwell in it, but who is the perfect? They gonna remain, these are the people that go on to become God. That's the only time you're going to be perfect. But go ahead and read. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth. What? And the transgressor shall be rooted out of it. So who's going to be rooted out of the earth? The transgressors. These are the ones that's breaking God's law. This is what we got to understand. Now go right into that third chapter. Because see, this is a continuation. Man put them chapters in there so you can just identify where you are. But this is a conversation that Solomon is having with the Lord. And he's sharing some key points with us if you want to get this wisdom and knowledge. You've got to deal with this woman. You've got to deal with her. Uh, Proverbs 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. What did it say, my brother? My son, forget not my law, uh -huh. but let thine heart keep my commandments. Who is the one that said the commandments ain't no good no more, people? Who said? Go ahead and read. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. What? You mean to tell me? If you want long life, you want to live long, keep the commandments. Spend some time with this woman called wisdom that's coming straight from the Lord and see what she got to give you. Go ahead and read. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. I always use that mercy because I guarantee you're going to need it up the road. Go ahead and read. Bind them about thy neck. Uh -huh. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Like a brother told me, you ain't supposed to be putting that cross around your neck. Put them commandments around your neck. That's what's going to give you eternal life. But keep reading. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. That's right, because you're seeking the Lord through his word and dealing with this woman called wisdom. When you open up your mouth, man, you'd be surprised. People just start gathering around you because they know you're speaking from the mouth of the Lord. Yes, but now, 
skip down to verse 13 and continue. What did it say? Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Well, you'd be happy. You'd be glad. Oh, thank you, Jesus, I got this word. Go ahead and read. And the man that getteth understanding. Uh-huh. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver. Uh-huh. And the gain thereof than fine gold. You mean to tell me wisdom is better than money? It's better than gold? Yes, sir. Maybe we might be seeking for the wrong thing. Go ahead and read. She is more precious than rubies. And rubies are expensive stone, ain't it? Yes, She's sir. more precious than rubies. Go ahead and read. This woman's something else here. Yeah. And, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. So it ain't nothing in this world to be compared to this wisdom that's in the word of God. You don't need no other book. You don't need no Dead Sea Scroll. The Septuagint and all. You don't need it. All you need is the word of God. Read it and believe it and watch to let the Lord go to work on your behalf. But what else would she do for you? 16th verse. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor. Woo, this girl got some here. Go ahead and read. Her ways are ways of pleasantness. Yes. And all her paths are peace. And that's what we need, that peace. It could be a world of trouble around it, but the Lord give you peace in your mind. You can deal with it. You can get through it. But you can't do it without that word. You got to spend some time with that woman called wisdom that came straight from the Lord. Read. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. She's a tree of life? Boy, this girl is packing. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. And happy is everyone that retaineth her. Yes, sir. You got to retain her once you get her now. Go ahead and read. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. Yes, sir. And by understanding hath he established the heavens. Uh-huh. By his knowledge the depths are broken up. Yes, sir. And the clouds drop down the dew. Everything is made through wisdom and knowledge, people. And you mean to tell me to get in God's kingdom and live forever, you ain't got to know nothing? Something's wrong with that, people. Go ahead and read. My son. Let not them depart from thine eyes. Uh -huh. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Go ahead. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Yes, sir. Then shall thou walk in the way safely, uh -huh. and thy foot shall not stumble. Oh, you ain't got to worry about something. Hey, sometimes you're going to slip and fall, but get back up and get right back in the game. That's what that woman wisdom is going to tell you to do. Go ahead and read. When thou liest down. Thou shalt not be afraid. Uh-huh. Yeah, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Ain't that some? Go ahead and read. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. That's right, because you know they got it coming if they don't repent. Now go right into uh, Proverbs 4 and 1. What did it say? Hear ye children the instruction of a father. Go ahead. And attend to no understanding. Uh-huh. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. We can't get around that law, people. And Psalms 111, the Lord said, A good understanding have all they that keep his commandments. Go ahead and read. For I was my father's son, uh -huh. tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. This is talking about Jesus. And the mother is who? Israel. Go ahead and read. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Boy, he's sending a message home, ain't he? Let your heart, which is your mind, retain my words. Keep the commandments and live. You can even live and have eternal life, people. That's what the commandments will do for you. Go ahead and read. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Uh -huh. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Don't decline from it now. Go ahead. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. What? Love her and she shall keep thee. This is the woman you want to keep right here. Verse 7, go ahead and read. Wisdom is the principal thing. Uh -huh. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Ain't that something? Because when this woman wisdom show up, she coming with two more homies, knowledge and understanding. That's the way they roll together. <laughs> but go ahead and read. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. Uh -huh. She shall bring thee to honor, and when thou dost embrace her, she shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. Uh -huh. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. What? She can even give you a crown of glory? Boy, mm. this woman, I got to start kicking it with her. <laughs> if she can give you eternal life and give you a crown of glory, why not spend some time? Even when you're with your wife, you can get with this woman. Y'all have a threesome and the Lord will <laughs> condone it. You feeling what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I'm just trying to tell you like it is. 
But he said, this woman will give you a crown of glory. She'll bring it right to you. But let's, let's, look, let's look at this crown. Let's chase this crown down a little bit, people. Because people, the Lord's word, I'm telling you, people, just put it down and just go in the back room and turn the TV off, cut the internet off, and let that book talk to you. You'll be surprised. You'll be calling away. You wasn't lying. That Bible. <laughs> I know. I know. But 2 Timothy 4, this is where we're going. 2 Timothy 4. And we're going to take a little look on this crown. We're going to get back to that woman wisdom. We're just trying to see how important this crown is. 2 Timothy 4, and we're going to read 5 to the 8. 2 Timothy 4, 5 to the 8. You got me, Rita? Yes, sir. Let me see, still hear some pages turning. We're going to wait on them because we're going to read this thing together. Okay. Go ahead. But watch thou in all things. Uh -huh. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. That's right. You're going to be a little afflicted. You got to go through some things because you think Jesus is going to get whipped on, beat on, and hung on the cross, and then we're just going to walk into the kingdom? No, no. Everybody's going to get a little scratch on their nose before it's all over. But we can get through it. Lord said, do the work of evangelism. Make full proof of your ministry. Go ahead and read. For I am now ready to be offered. Uh-huh. And the time of my departure is at hand. Now this is Paul talking. He said, Lord, I'm, I'm ready to depart from this world now. And the time of my departure is at hand. Go ahead and read. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Then the Lord said, he that do it to the end, the same shall be saved. This is what you got to do. You got to run this race all the way. You can't run half of them and lay down and say, oh, man, I beat everybody. And everybody running past you. Man, the race ain't over. We got four wide more miles to go. Mm -hmm. But look at that. Look what he said. This is what got me, though. Eighth verse. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Uh-oh, there go that crown. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Uh-huh. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Ain't that something? But he read in Revelation that when the Lord returned, people going to be hiding the mountains and rocks fall on them. Hide us from the face of him that sat up on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. Because when you dirty, hey, you got to be dirty. You want a mountain to fall on you and hide you? <laughs> what have you been doing, young man? Hey, you done got out of order, but those that love is appearing, they waiting for what? That crown. And who going to bring it to you? That spiritual woman from the Lord called wisdom. She'll walk you right down to it. And you just got to stay on it. You got to endure it to the end. You got to fight the good fight of faith. And you can't give up. Yes, sir. You feeling me? Yes, sir. But now, let's look a little bit more on that crown. But we're going to make one stop before we get to, to more of that crown. Let's go back to Proverbs, the seventh chapter. So I tell my shoulders, I say, man, you know something? You ain't got to have Jay-Z and all these cats to look up to. Hey, among your people was the wisest man that ever lived. From among our people was the greatest general that ever ruled over an army, which was Joshua. What well, Josh, what man you know can make the last of the Lord, make the sun stand still so I can kill the rest of my enemies? Mm. Then he told him, take these five kings and lock them in a cave and come back and get them when you get through killing your enemies. He said, now bring them forth before all the people. He said, now put your foot on their neck. And he said, tell the people, so shall the Lord do to all your enemies that fight against you. But you got to believe it. You got to have that faith. But now, Proverbs 7 and 1, what did it say, brother? My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. I mean, look like he's driving the message home to me. Who is the one that said the commandments ain't no more? Go ahead and read. Keep my commandments and live. You want to live? Keep them commandments. Go ahead. And my law as the apple of thine eye. That's right. That means the law is your favorite thing. Go ahead and read. Bind them upon thy fingers. Write them upon the tables of thine heart. And the tables of your heart is your mind, people. But what you're looking at here is the new covenant. Lord, so I ain't going to write it on stone. I'm going to write it in your heart and in your mind. But how do you write the, uh, the covenant in your heart? By reading and studying. And the more time you spend with it, the more you are getting that word. And you're getting that mind of Christ. But it's got to come through studying, wisdom. You got to spend some time with this spiritual woman from the Lord. What verse are you at? That was in the three. That was in the three? 
continue. Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister. Yes. And call understanding, understanding thy kinswoman. See, when this wisdom shows up, she's going to bring her two homies with her. Knowledge and understanding. So now you got wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. These are the three ingredients that the Lord created the earth and the heavens with, people. We know we could use them. Mm -hmm. But you got to believe it. Verse 5, what did it say? That they may keep thee from the strange woman. Uh-huh. From the stranger with flattering with her lip word. That's right. And hey, you can look at this on the physical side, that a strange woman is a woman that's not yours. And then you look at it on the spiritual side, it's a false religion that's claiming to be God's wife. Don't listen to her, the book tell you. She'll be talking to you every Sunday morning. <laughs> if you get my meaning. Yes, sir. But now, let's go to Revelation 3 and look at this crown. Look at this crown some more. Because see, the Israel of God people is a place for healing. It's a hospital. It's a school. It is a, a place where you can come and find serenity in the truth. This is where you need to be. We need to be looking forward to the Sabbath. Sometimes I just, I'll be glad, I'll be so glad when the Sabbath get here. Because yes, now I can spend all my whole day on thinking about God. Reading that book to sun up to sun down. I mean, he gave you six days to do your thing, and you can't give him one? Can we be that selfish? Hmm. Revelation 3 and verse 11, what did it say, brother? Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, uh -huh. that no man take thy crown. What, you mean a man can take your crown? Why? Because if you listen to a man and not listen to the word, that's what he's doing, trying to, if I slide up on you, tell you the commandments ain't no more, guess what I'm trying to do? Take, Take your, your crown. If I say you ain't got to keep the Sabbath day, you ain't got to deal with the feast days no more, what am I doing? Taking your crown. And they're trying to take it from you every Sunday morning, man. And what killed me, I see people sitting there, they just don't know, and they saying, amen. Oh, preacher, you, but they don't know he there to take your crown. But it ain't the people that we're against. It's that false doctrine. That's what's killing the people. God's people is up in there. They're going to come out just like we did. Yes, Some come out before others. You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But this is what it's all about. He said, let no man take your crown. 12 verse, right? That was the end of the letter. Yeah, we're on 12 now. Read. Him that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Uh -huh. And he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God. Yes. The name of the city of my God, uh -huh. which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. Now this New Jerusalem coming out of heaven from God, this is the kingdom's father. This is the father's kingdom. But Jesus' kingdom going to be here a thousand years before the father's kingdom get it. He coming to clean up this earth, set everything in order. So when Jesus, when the father comes, he going to deliver up the, the kingdom to the father. And he's going to be in Jerusalem, on this earth. And if you up in heaven, the, the guy going to take, look here, man, you, the Lord's down in Jerusalem. He's gone. <laughs> you made a wrong turn somewhere, brother. But listen now, we're going to go right into the fourth chapter. Now, I need you to put your thinking caps on with this one now. Because this is why the Lord said you got to, man does not live by bread alone, but how does he live? By every word. And this is one of them chapters you have to pay attention to. Every word. Because if you don't, you'll miss it. Revelation 4 and verse 1. What did it say, brother? After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. Uh-oh, right away. Where are, we, where are we going to? We're in heaven now. But are we? Read. And the first voice which I heard was that it were of a trumpet talking with me. Uh-huh. Which said, come up hither. Oh, uh, I know we're in heaven now, Ray. They told us, come on up hither. But let's read a little bit more. Go ahead. And I will show thee things which must be hereafter. See, that's a key word in this whole thing. He's showing us things to be what? Hereafter. This is even beyond us, people. We're going to see what heaven this is talking about. Go ahead and read. And immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven. Uh-huh. And one sat on the throne. Uh-oh. He said, I got you now, Ray. We see the Lord sitting on the throne in heaven. What you mean we ain't in heaven? Well, let's look a little closer. Read. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper 
and a sardine stone. Uh -huh. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, uh -huh. in sight like unto an emerald. There was what around the throne? A rainbow. Now, I want to ask you a question. Is the rainbow around the Father's throne or is it around Jesus' throne? Jesus. So we looking down in Jerusalem during that thousand years of peace. Because it's three heavens. The earth is one. And when you get off the earth until you get to that black hole, that's two. And above that is water. And above that is the throne of God. That's the third heaven. So people say, I'm going to heaven. I said, well, which one are you going to? Mm -hmm. Now they really think I'm joking. But he said that rainbow was around his throne, people. That's what separated. That's why you got to know what the book say. We looking down in Jerusalem. So a rainbow was around his throne. And what else happened? And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. Wait a minute, who are these four and twenty seats? These is the governors of the sanctuary. These is Aaron's son. We can't teach everything to you in one sitting, but these are the twenty-four elders. Hey, you know ain't no twenty-four seats in heaven right now. Nothing but the Father and Jesus. Am I right or wrong? Right. Who is sitting on these twenty-four seats? The elders of the sanctuary. So if that's the case, this got to be the first resurrection. Yes, sir. You with me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Go ahead and read. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, uh -huh. clothed in white raiment. And what they had? And they had on their heads crowns of gold. Because that's when you get your crown of gold, people, when the seven trumpet is blown. They sitting on throne with the Lord, and they wearing them crowns. But who brought them there? That woman, that wisdom. She gave them a crown of gold, just like she gave them to Paul. Yes, and to all of them that love his appearing. You understand what you're reading, people? Yes, sir. Hey, this is, we want to get that, let no man take your crown. Is that what the book said? Sixth, fifth verse, what did it say? And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, uh -huh. which are the seven spirits of God. Yes, sir. And before the throne there were a sea of glass like unto crystal. Uh -huh. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Who was these beasts? These are the ones that the Lord set there in the Garden of Eden and cut off the way of the tree of life. And they before him every day. And holy, 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 holy. That's all they say all day. Mm. But these are the eyes of the Lord. They sent in every place. They watching everything. If you're thinking the Lord ain't looking at you, he's seeing everything you do. Nothing is getting by. But now, Let's see what time this is. Skip down to verse 10 and continue. The four and twenty elders fall down before him uh -huh. that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever. Go ahead. And cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things. For thy pleasure they are and were created. Ain't that something? But I want to ask you something. When is Jesus going to get glory and honor, people? It's when the seventh trumpet is blown and when he's sitting down in Jerusalem on the throne of David. Am I right or wrong? Right. And that's when you're going to get your crown if you were so blessed in that first resurrection. I'm talking about men and women, the sons and the daughters. But back up to Revelation, the second chapter. Now, we just take a little look at this crown. We're going to get back on that, that woman of wisdom. But this is where she can take it to. She's a girl that the God have sent. Revelation 2 and 9. What did it say now? I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, uh -huh. but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. What? There's some people out here saying they're the Jews and they lying? But they are what? The synagogue of Satan, people. Go ahead and read. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Uh -huh. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Uh, these are those that got to go through great tribulation. Go ahead. That ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Uh -huh. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. You see what I'm saying? Even if you get killed in this thing, you still going to get your crown. Amen. Ain't that something? And if you get killed during the great tribulation... Look here, people, the Lord said in Isaiah 26, he shows you a big secret thing. He said, enter into thy chamber as it were but for a moment until the indignation be overpassed. Mm -hmm. So when you die, you could be died 2,000 years ago. 
But when the Lord wake you up, it's going to be just like you nodded off for a moment. Yes, sir. Yeah, I must have dozed off. What, yes, sir. What happened? But everything going to be different when you wake up now. And if you was on the right side, hey, Lord, I tell you, come on up here and get your crown. Boy, that's why I say in some, he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. That's when you rejoice. But you know what? Lord, said, I'm going to deliver you a crown of glory. Each on life, people, this is what it's all about. But now, let's go to Proverbs 5, because you don't want to be like this here. Lord telling you all things, this woman of wisdom, she letting you know, don't do this. This is what the Lord likes, this is what he don't like. Do this and you'll get the crown. You'll live forever in God's kingdom. Proverbs 5, we're going to read 1 and 2 and then we're going to skip. Y'all with me? Y'all getting some understanding? Amen. That's what it's all about. Proverbs 5, 1 and 2, what did you say, mister? My son, attend unto my wisdom and bow thine ear to my understanding. Ain't that something? He let you know what it is. Go ahead and read. That thou mayest regard discretion. And that thy lips may keep knowledge. Because if you're hanging around this woman and you getting fed from this woman, from this word, your lips going to keep knowledge. The Lord said, there's gold and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge is a precious jewel. Don't ever forget that. But now, skip down to verse 11. What did it say? And thou mourn at the last. Now, this is a bad that, that didn't listen. It didn't the, receive no instruction. What happened to him? Go ahead. When thy flesh and thy body are consumed. Go ahead. And say how have I hated instruction? Uh -huh. And my heart despised reproof. That's, that's a bad time to find that out in the lake of fire, ain't it? You want to get that before you get there. You don't mm -hmm. even want to go there. Mm -mm. Go ahead and read. And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers. What didn't obey the voice of your teachers? Go ahead. Nor inclined my ear to them that instructed me. Oh, you were just under all rebellious. Go ahead. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. Ain't that something? He was almost in all evil. But skip down to verse 21 and continue. What did he say? For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. People, you can't get away with nothing. He's watching everything. That's why he said he's going to bring every work into judgment, every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. But the thing is, is to clean that closet up before the Lord get here. Every man got to clean it up because we all dirty. Lord said in uh, Psalms 130, he said, if he would mark iniquity, who would stand? Mm -hmm. That's why you got to remain under that blood. Because if the Lord looked beyond that blood, nobody would make it. Mm -mm. But when he see that blood, what he going to do? Pass oh. over you. That's why we keep the pass over. 22, what did he say? His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself. Yes, sir. And he shall be holding with the cords of his sin. That's what's going to hold you down, your own sin, not the sins of somebody else. Go ahead and read. He shall die without instruction, and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray. And people, you don't want to go astray once you get that true word of God. But now, let's go to Proverbs 8, and let's see what this woman, this, this spiritual woman from God is telling us to do. Proverbs 8 and verse 1, what does it say now? Doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? She crying all the time, especially in these last days. Stop doing your wickedness. Stop cheating. Stop killing. Stop lying. Go ahead and read. She standeth in the top of high places, by the way in the places of the past. She warned you everywhere. Skip down to verse 7. What did she say? For my mouth shall speak truth. Uh-huh. And wickedness is an abomination to my lips. You know she come with uncut word of God because wickedness is an abomination to her lips. She won't even speak it. If it ain't the truth, it won't come out of her mouth. Go ahead and read. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. Yes. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. Uh-huh. They are all plain to him that understandeth. And the right to them that find knowledge. Because when she show up, she's going to bring her two homies with her. Who are they? Knowledge and understanding. But keep reading. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than a choice of gold. Oh, go ahead. Why? For wisdom is better than rubies. What? For wisdom is better than rubies. Uh-huh. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. What? Ain't nothing in this world is compared to the word of God? No, sir. Is you understanding what you read, people? Go ahead and read. I wisdom dwell with prudence uh -huh. and find out knowledge of witty inventions. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. 
Pride and arrogancy. See, that, that woman she appointed, you got to get rid of that. Got to get rid of this. Arrogancy, pride. Lord, can't deal with it. Go ahead and read. And the evil way. Uh huh. And the forward mouth. Do I hate? What is that forward mouth, people? That's a mouth you can't tell, and they're talking all the time. You've been around the people, you can't get a word in their head right, but you're holding up your finger, ain't nothing job too there. Come on, man. Let me get a word. I said, well, look at me. I got to go. I can't. Your words got me in captivity. I got to go. <laughs> You've been around the people, that you, you can see them come. Uh oh, there come old boy. Let's get on out of here. You, you don't want to even fool with that kind of fooling. But this is what it don't deal with that forward mouth. What's the verse you stop at? In the 13. In the 13. Let's go a little for Read that 14 first. What it said? Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. Ain't that something? Read. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. Oh, by wisdom. That's how they reign and decree justice. Go ahead. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. And look what she said right here. 17. I love them that love me. Oh, my God. Read. And those that seek me early shall find me. And why, why would she seek her? Go ahead. Riches and honor are with me. What? Yeah, durable riches and righteousness. Woo! This woman got some stuff in her bag, don't you? Go ahead and read. My fruit is better than gold. Yes, it is. Yeah, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. Ain't that something better than choice silver? Go ahead and read. I lead in the way of righteousness. In the midst of the paths of judgment, uh -huh. that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. Because wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. But if this woman will bring you, she got plenty of gifts from God, and she wants to bring it to you. She wants to give it to you. But now, let's, let's go back up to the book of Job. Job 28. See, everybody talk about the patience of Job. Job, yeah, patience, Job was patient. But Job was a tower of wisdom, people. He spoke some things. You get in that Job, you might not come out of there at 12 o'clock midnight. You tell your husband, baby, to call my job. I ain't going in the morning. I'm going to spend some time with Job. Job 28, and we're going to do a little skimming, but I, I, I just, uh, just uh, telling you, read all of this. And it's entire. It's one of the most, one of the most beautiful pieces, man. Job 28 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Surely there is a vein for silver and a place for gold where they find it. And that's true. Go ahead, because you find gold and silver all in the earth. Go ahead and read. Iron is taken out of the earth, and brass is molten out of the stone. Oh, that's how they get brass. They melt that stone down. That's how you get brass, huh? Go ahead. But now, skip down. We're going to... For time's sake, skip down to verse 7. What did it say? There is a path which no fowl knoweth, and which the vultures I have not seen. What? That's a path which a, no fowl knoweth. That's a bird, and which the vultures I have not. And you know, a vulture can get on top of a mountain and see his prey four or five miles off. He can see him in the bushes. But he ain't seen this path. Mm -hmm. What path is this the Lord is talking about? Go ahead and read. The lion's whelp have not trodden it, uh -huh. nor the fierce lion passed by it. Ain't nobody... Seeing it, ain't nobody passed by it, he said. Go ahead and read. He put it forth his hands upon the rock. He overturned the mountains by the roots. This is what the Lord, when you look at a mountain that be so big, you be saying the Lord Lord's here turning over by the roots like it ain't nothing. He got mm -hmm. power, people. Go ahead and read. He cutteth out rivers among the rocks. What we call them waterfalls, don't we? Go ahead and read. And his eye seeth every precious thing. I told you he ain't getting away with nothing. The Lord looking mm -hmm. at everything. Go ahead and read. He bindeth the floods from the overflowing. Uh-huh. And the thing that is hid bringeth he forth to light. Now, the Lord can do all these things. And then he turned around and asked a question. What is it? But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? See, where can you catch up with this woman of wisdom? Where can you find her? You got to look for her. You got to dig. Where is the place? Read that verse again. What did it say? But where shall wisdom be found? Uh -huh. And where is the place of understanding? Go ahead. Man knoweth not the price thereof. Neither is it found in the land of the living. What? You can't find it in the land of the living. This woman here, you got to search for. She coming straight from the Lord, people. She's not in this earth until you receive her in your heart. But go ahead and read. 
The depth said, it is not in me. Uh-huh. And the sea said, is it not with me? Ain't that something? Now skip down to verse 21. What did it say? No, 20, 20 verse. What did it say? No, 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 no. Hecky, no. We got to read this. We ain't, we, I'm sorry. Go back where? Let's go back to verse 14 and read. We got to read it, man. The depth said, it is not in me. Uh -huh. And the sea says, it is not with me. So where can we find it? This is the question. Go ahead and read. It cannot be gotten for gold. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. In other words, you can't buy it. Go ahead and read. It cannot be valued with the gold or offer, with the precious onyx or the sapphire. And the offer, this gold or offer is so precious you don't even see it. It's few, but he said, and the onyx and the sapphire. These are some expensive songs, but the price of wisdom is above all of this here. But where can you find it? That's the question we're trying to find. Go ahead and read. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it. What? Go ahead. And the exchange of it shall be for jewels of fine gold. Shall not be for shall jewels. Shall not be for jewels. For jewels of fine gold. Go ahead and read. No mention shall be made. Or coral, of coral, or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. Woo! This is something, man. Now you start to understand that if you ain't got a dime, the Lord said, thou art rich, but then you're poor. Mm -hmm. I got nothing but 50 cents in my pocket, but I got a whole lot of word of God to give. That's why Peter told that man sitting at that gate, he said, look here, silver and gold, we ain't got a quarter. But what we have, we'll give you, take up your bed and walk. But go ahead and read. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it. Not even the topaz? Go ahead. Neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Then there's only one question I got to ask. 20th verse. Whence then cometh wisdom? And where is the place of understanding? It's something, man. Let's keep away. Where so? But let's see where it is. Keep reading. Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living and kept, and kept close from the fowls of the air. So this is the path with a vultures I ain't seen. No, the blind walk past it. It's that wisdom and knowledge because they don't know where to find it at. But the Lord knows he's going to tell you. That woman of wisdom, she know where it is. Mm -hmm. But what if you ain't dealing with her? Can you find it? This is the thing we're trying to get you to see. Go ahead and read. Destruction and death say, we have heard the fame thereof with our ears. Yes, yeah, Satan, I didn't say he know where it at. He said, we know the fame. Go ahead. God understandeth the way thereof, uh -huh. and he knoweth the place thereof. Go ahead. For he looketh to the ends of the earth, and seeth under the whole heaven. Boy, I tell you, if you think the Lord ain't looking at you, you're dead wrong. Dead wrong. Go ahead and read. To make the way for the winds. Uh-huh. And he weigheth the waters by measure. Go ahead and read. When he made a decree for the rain, and the way for the lightning of the thunder. Uh-huh. Then did he see it, and declared it. And prepared it, yeah, and searched it out. Oh, now the Lord, see, this is the way the Lord works. He's perfect. He is God. He created everything. But when he made something, he declared it. He prepared it. And then he searched it out and made sure everything is straight. See, this is the way the Lord wants us to operate in our business. Mm -hmm. And then what did he say unto man? And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Oh, my God. You see how that priest take you all around the world and drop you right back off to a little summer common denominator. Ain't that something? So this is where that woman going to take you. Where she going to take you first? To fear the Lord. Because when you fear the Lord, now you can get some instructions and start walking in his word. Yes, sir. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And what did that say? And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord is... That is wisdom. Uh -huh. And to depart from evil is understanding. Man, you can't beat that, can you? That's how you get it. You got to get that fear of the Lord. You know, I ain't going to read it today, but you make a note in your, in your a note, Psalms 19. And it'll tell you about that fear of the Lord. But now, let's go to 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. Y'all getting some understanding? Y'all with me? Should I have missed my plane and stayed in Chicago? <laughs> <laughs> you know, every place I go, uh, they said, Ray, you know, Ray's cool, but he comes for two minute scriptures. Brother Boy, don't, don't send him down here no more, okay? <laughs> no, no, nothing like that. Send him a snapshot or something. But now, 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 1. 
Everybody knew about this, but today don't nobody know nothing. You talking about you feel with the Holy Ghost and you don't even know when the Sabbath day is. I said, Good, you fool or something, but I don't want to tell you what it is. But now, listen now, but it ain't the people, it's the teachers, man. Ain't nobody teaching them nothing. They really looking for the Lord. Why do you think they filling them churches up on Sunday? They looking for God. But when they come and get that garbage, the book said that false prophet will make you a two-fold child of hell worse than themselves. First mm -hmm. Corinthians 2 and verse 1 again for me, please, sir. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Right, he said, my man's wisdom. I didn't come with you with man's wisdom. Go ahead. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Uh-huh. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Go ahead. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Because that's what comes with that wisdom and knowledge. What is it? It's power. But it's the power of God. The word of Israel means as a prince, thou hast power with God and with man and has prevailed. Hey, it's already done already won it, but you got to believe it. But go ahead and read. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. But where should it stand? But in the power of God. Yes, sir. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. That's right. The ones that are striving to be perfect. And one thing we is perfect in is knowing who God is and knowing where his word is at. Yes, sir. That woman, spiritual woman, will bring it right to you and let you know all things you need to know. But you got to burn a little candlelight. You got to Cut off Oprah Winfrey. Get rid of Jerry Springer. <laughs> but let me go. Go ahead. What verse you have? I'm getting middle, crazy. Middle now. of six. Go ahead and read. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world, that cometh to naught. We mean the wisdom of this world comes to nothing? To naught. Go ahead and read. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Uh huh. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. You mean this wisdom we was dealing with, it was ordained before the foundation of the world? And you kicking against it? What is wrong with us? Mm. But keep reading now. Which none of the princes of this world knew. Uh -huh. For had they known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But we know they didn't know it because the book already told us that it wasn't found in the land of the living. Lord got to show it to you. But now, let's see something now. Skip down to verse 14. What did it say? But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. They spiritually understood. That's why if you got that carnal mind, you can't receive spiritual things. Mm -mm. If you got that carnal mind, all you're worried about is carnal things, money, women, cars, houses, men. Hey, you can't receive that spiritual thing because mm -mm. you got that carnal mind. He said that carnal mind is enmity against God. It cannot be subject to the law of God, mm -mm. neither indeed can it be. But go ahead and read. But he that is spiritual judges all things, uh -huh. yet he himself is judged of no man. Go ahead. For who have known the mind of the Lord? that he may instruct him, uh -huh. but we have the mind of Christ. Who, what mind we got? The mind of Christ. And that's what we got to have. But who gonna bring you that mind? That spiritual woman from the Lord called wisdom. She'll lead you right there too. Even give you a crown. She'll tell you where to start. Start right here with this fear of the Lord because that is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And to depart from evil is what? Understand. Understand. Now let's go to Revelation yes, 22. Sir. Boy, people, we're going to fool around. We're going to fool around and find out something today. We're going to fool around. You're going to say, you know what? I did a lot of crazy things, but I was in the right place today. Yes, sir. Revelation 22 and verse 16. 22 and verse 16. Because this is what the Lord is telling you now. This is why this, this, this book is so beautiful. It's, it's straight from God. Okay, go ahead and read. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. Uh -huh. I am the root and the offspring of David, 
and the bright and morning star. Hey, if you're looking for the star of David, who is it? Jesus. Go ahead and read. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that hear it say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Ain't that something? It don't cost you a dime. But it, everybody's saying, come, come, come where? Come and drink of this water of life freely. This is what we don't know. This thing is free. Hey, we know it takes money and stuff to keep the lights on and all that. That's all that's good. But this word is free. And the Lord won't let you know that. Somebody needs to send that memo to the false prophet. <laughs> but now, <laughs> the Lord calls this word another way. He called it the water of life. Let's see, can we find out a little bit about that water of life? Let's go to Isaiah 55. See, that's why I love the word of God. You don't have to make up no beautiful story. All you got to do is turn the page and read. Let the Bible interpret the Bible. We ain't smart enough. to. to how you going to interpret a mind that made everything that's made, the wind and everything? You going to interpret his mind? Mm. You got to let the book interpret the book. Let's see what this water is he's talking about. Isaiah 55. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah 55 and verse 1. And when you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Ho, everyone that thirsted. Wait a minute. If you're thirsty, he said, everyone that's thirsty, because everybody ain't thirsty yet. But I see y'all thirsty because you wouldn't be here on the Sabbath day if it wasn't. Thirsty. Everyone that's thirsty, do what? Come ye to the water. Come to the water? Go ahead. And he that have no money. How much money you need? No money. Go ahead. Come ye by and eat. Yeah, come by wine and milk without money and without price. So the Lord described his word like wine and milk and water. But he let you know these things that cost, but it's free. Come to God because he got that living water and we going to show you. But go ahead and read. Wherefore, do you spend money for that which is not bread? Uh-huh. And labor for that which satisfies not? He said, why are you spending your money for nothing, people? You go to church on Sunday, the man, the choir sing 15 songs. He talked for three hours. He would read you <laughs> one scripture. The script he read, you done forgot what it was. Uh-huh. And then you leave a bank on the table. Ooh. Why are you spending your bread for that which is for your money for that which is not bread, people. Will you go to the grocery store and go to Kroger and get a box of two picks and put $5,000 on it? Mm. They're going to say, man, come on back, get another box. We have another box for you tomorrow. Mm. But you ain't going to do that. Then why do you do it when you go on Sunday, when you ain't getting nothing, people? You mean I've been going to church for 40 years. I don't even know when the Sabbath day is. Mm -hmm. Surely I am in the wrong place. Wrong place. I don't, want, I don't want to wait 40 more years to figure out I, mean, I, don't, I ain't getting nothing. You know when you ain't getting nothing, people. But this thing kept turning into a fashion show. I mean, you got to come through the aisle like Jock B. You want everybody to see. Ooh, look, that's Sister Son. I mean, you put nothing. I mean, yeah, you don't even get up. I see some sisters don't even get up until the preacher starts preaching. That's when they start at the fashion show then. <laughs> They going to work with that thing. I said, oh, no. Hey, key now. But now, what, read that third verse. What did it say? Middle of two. Read. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Where the fatness at, people? Right here in the world. Man, it's so fat you can't even consume it all. Go ahead and read. Incline your ear and come unto me. Uh huh. Here and your soul shall live. Go ahead. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. When is the last time you drunk some water with your ear, people? This is the water he's talking about, people. Hearken and your soul shall live. But now, let's make sure we got this thing right now. Let's go to St. John 4. This is what it is, people. And if you ain't getting it like this here, you in the wrong place. Because the Lord said this thing is line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. And I, keep, I can't stress more, it's not we talking against the people, we talking against false doctrine because that's what destroys the people. And if you're dealing with that false doctrine and you're teaching the people so, I got to treat you like an enemy because that's what you are. You're destroying the people of God. You ain't trying to help them. 
and then you're going to take money from them too? Mm. It's too much, man. He said these false prophets, they shut up the kingdom of heaven. They don't go in themselves, and those that would enter, they hinder them. See, that's a bad spirit. I don't care if you don't want to go, that's on you. That's your choice. The Lord gave you that. But when you try to stop everybody else, see, that's when I got a problem with you. And this is what we got to realize. But now, let's look a little bit more on this water. St. John 4. St. John 4, we're going to pick it up at verse 7. I'm going to see, can y'all see this with your spiritual eye? I ain't going to say nothing. St. <laughs> John 4 and 7. What did it say, brother? There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Uh-huh. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. And that's what Jesus said, give me, give, me, give me a little bit of water. What did she say? For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Uh-huh. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. See, this woman, she didn't even know she wasn't a Jew. She was a stranger. But they knew that the Jews wasn't dealing with them because the Lord gave a commandment that go nothing to the lost sheep of Israel because you had to wake the teachers up first before you can get the students. You know what I'm saying? But... He said, they, the Jews ain't got no dealing with the Samaritans. 10th verse, go ahead and read. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that says to thee, Give me to drink, uh -huh. thou wouldn't have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. What? He would have gave you that living water. Just the kind of water you drink with your ear. And this woman of wisdom, she got gallons of it. She kind of get you to drink. But go ahead and read. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, uh -huh. and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Go ahead and read. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, uh -huh. which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Uh huh. She didn't know because the Lord had took Israel out of their land, and then he brought some strangers in Samaria. That's why the Jews weren't dealing with strangers. But he's talking about Jacob, our father. She didn't know that Jacob wasn't up, but she had been living in that land so long. She thought she was. But he said, look here now. Look what the Jesus respond was, 13. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Uh -huh. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Give me that water, love. Then like this woman, this spiritual woman, she got gallons of it. She got two of her homies got some. Get y'all drink this water. Because it'll come up in you into everlasting life. This water, what water? The word of God, people. You got to get on that word. You got to burn that middle that kind of light. And I guarantee you, I tell you what, put yourself on a regimen for, like the book said in the Lord's Prayer, uh, give us this day our daily bread, right? If you drink this water every day, just say for, I'm going to put you on light, just like for 20 minutes a day. Do it for six months with consistency. It'll be a change in your thing. I will guarantee you. Now you try it for yourself and see. Brothers called my house sometime in the morning. They, they said, well, I didn't want to disturb you because they know I'm in that book in the morning. You know, I tell them I'm in school. I go to school at 9 o'clock and don't call me anymore. I'm in school, man. And I do my thing. I start my day off with that, get me two, three hours in. Sometimes it get good, I get five in. But I got to have that word because, hey, ain't no way I'm going to come and catch a plane all the way down here and lie to y'all. I better know what I'm talking about when I come through them doors. <laughs> Y'all will call. Brother Boy, look at me. Let me holler at you for a minute. Huh? <laughs> Your boy Ray. I know you've known him a long time, but he's, he's messed up. But, but the thing is, this is that living water, people. This is that living. Well, let, I'm, here's another place I could never understand. I used to read this all my life. I heard people quoted in church. And that dude fell asleep and done dropped his. Uh, no, that's my man. Okay. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, brother. But I used to wonder, what does this mean? I heard people quoting this. Let's go to Psalms 23. And I couldn't understand until I, that woman told me about that water. Then it was crystal clear to me. Psalms 23 and verse 1. Psalms 23 and verse 1. 
Psalms 23, and we're going to wait on you. We're going to wait on you. And if this thing seems like it's taking long, it ain't like I got a lot of scriptures. I'm just waiting on y'all to find the scriptures. That's what's holding this thing up. <laughs> you got to put the blame somewhere. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you got to have a fall guy in this thing. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Psalms 23 and verse 1, what did it say now? The Lord is my shepherd. Yes, sir. I shall not want. Because if the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not. David said, I'm young and now I'm old. I've never seen a righteous man forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. Go ahead and read. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. All the green. And what else do he do? He leadeth me beside the still waters. What water does the Lord lead him by? What is it? It's his word. You got to take some time and lay down beside the still waters. And let the Lord wash and cleanse your soul. You got to put that book down and bag up 10 feet and then run to it and jump in it like <laughs> I mean to turn all around. Woo! Woo! Hey, when you come up, you be clean. You hear what I said? Lay down beside the still water. Read that again, brother. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Uh -huh. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Go ahead. He restoreth my soul. Uh -huh. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, uh -huh. I, shall, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. People, where do you think the valley of the shadow of death is, people? Right here. When you walk out that door, you in it. People dying around you all the time, people getting killed, especially our young folk. But the Lord said, uh-uh. But when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil, because the Lord is with me. But the only way the Lord gonna be with you is you got to be with him and doing what he say do. That's it. And he ain't gonna take no foolishness. Go ahead and read. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Ain't that something? Everybody on the job hates you, want to get rid of you, but they can't touch you because the can't Lord is with you. Because yes, the Lord be to prepare the table for you in the midst of your enemies. That's why the Lord tell you when you're working for somebody, work like you're working for the Lord, give them your best, do the best, go that extra mile, do everything. Because you know what? All of a sudden you're going to start being promoted because your thing is shining above everybody else. He's yes, telling sir. you what to do, but we ain't listening. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Thou anointest my head with oil. What oil is that, people? The word of God. Didn't he say there was ten virgins, five was wise, five was foolish, five put oil in their lamps, and five didn't. And I ask you, which five are you? Mm. Read. My cup runneth over. See, Jesus, we get it in measure, but Jesus' cup was running over. Water just gushing. Go ahead and read. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Uh -huh. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes, sir. That's what we're trying to get to. Let's go to Daniel, the second chapter now. We've got to start dealing now. We're getting ready to start dealing. Daniel 2 now and 19. But ain't this word sweet, people? Why don't they teach this in the church? That's what I'm asking. Why don't they deal with it like this here? Do you know how many households this would save? How many children would be still with their parents if they brought up in this gospel here, bro? Mm -hmm. Every man go out there and get his son, it wouldn't be no game. Mm -hmm. Go out there and get your daughter, bring her home. You ain't got to be out there shaking and all that. Lord got something bigger for you than shaking. Yes, sir. Fix a milkshake or something and chill. Yes, sir. Now, now I'm going to talk. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just feel you had to throw it in there. Yeah. But now, hey, but I'm going to tell you something. The Lord loves his daughters now, don't get me wrong. They precious in the eyes of the Lord. The Lord tell you in Deuteronomy, they were so precious, he didn't even want their feet to touch the ground. But that wickedness of settling in, boy, you'd be one of the dirtiest monsters that you've ever seen. But now, Daniel 2 and 19, what did it say? Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Uh huh. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. What did he say? Da Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God. Forever and ever. Uh -huh. For wisdom and might are his. Whose is it? It's his. Go ahead. And he changes the times and the seasons. What? He removes kings and set it up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. There it is, boy. That, whoo. 
That woman putting you up on some shoes? He said, he set up king in town down. I want to send that note out to the voters. But go ahead and read. He revealeth the deep and secret things. Uh -huh. He knoweth what is in the darkness, yes. and the light dwelleth with him. The light dwelleth with him. But now flip over right to Daniel, the fourth chapter, and we're going to read uh, verse 1. And we're going to do some skipping. But hey, y'all take these scriptures down and go over into the tide and go through it and get you. I'm telling you, it's a blessing in you. And then once you get it, pass it on so somebody else can get it. Go ahead and read. Nebuchadnezzar, the king unto all people, nations, and languages uh -huh. that dwell in the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. Go ahead. I thought it was good to show the signs and wonders that the high God have wrought toward me. That's right. See, the Lord changed Nebuchadnezzar's mind. He was puffed up at one time, standing on the back and talking about, did not I build this great Babylon with my own two hands? Mm -hmm. Lord said, all you did, Lord said, the watchers. Generation to generation. Yes, sir. But now, skip down to verse 17. What did that say? This matter is by decree of the watchers. Oh, uh, who was the watchers? Because I tell you, the Lord looking at everything you do, people. He got them seven spirits watching you at all the time. The Lord is watching. Jesus is watching. The Father is watching. Because their business is man. Go ahead and read. And the demand by the word of the holy ones. Go ahead. To the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Uh huh. And setteth up over it the basis of men. Who set these kings up? Who is the one that's putting them? That's those that are in authority, the rulers and those that's over in authority. Why? Because the Lord didn't set them up there. He the one setting them there. It looked like. He, who's the Lord? Will the Lord set up Trump? Yes, he will to further his program, mm -hmm. to get this world where you need to be, to be, get ready for this Armageddon. The Lord know what he's doing? Yes, sir. Look at what the book is saying, people. You'll learn something. But now, read a little bit more. This dream I, Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now thou, O Belshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof. Uh -huh. For as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation. Go ahead. But thou art able, for the spirit of the holy God is in thee. Oh, what spirit? He could have said, hey, the Holy Ghost is in you. What is the Holy Ghost? One form of it is what? The word of God. One form of it is the breath. One form of it is the aim. One form of it is the thoughts of your mind. So when you're dealing with that Holy Spirit, you got to be definitive mm -hmm. and let me know what aisle you're coming from. But now, what, what verse was that? In the 18. In the 18, skip down to verse 24 and continue. What did he say? This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord, the king. Now look what the Lord told Nebuchadnezzar. Now remember, Nebuchadnezzar was the first Gentile world in ruling power. He ruled the whole earth. It wasn't number four that did it. Nebuchadnezzar, the Medo-Persian, Medes, we know it's Russian, the Persians, is Iranian. Greek and Rome. But now, 25, what did he say? That they shall drive thee from men. And that thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. Uh -huh. And that they make thee to eat grass as oxen. Go ahead. And that they wet thee with the dew of heaven. Uh huh. And seven times shall pass over thee. Seven times. So I let you know when uh, Jacob worked for Rachel, seven years, it was seven years. That's why the Lord said, and then the great tribulation is times, times, and a dividing of time. That's three and a half years. But go ahead and read. Till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. And then what? And give it to whomsoever he will. Ain't that something? And look here. When Nebuchadnezzar come up out eating that grass, he said his hair grew longer than uh, eagle feathers and his nails grew longer than bear claws. And he ate grass for seven years. Mm. Sometimes you'll be rolling, you're making money, you're doing, oh, you're on top, you're kicking the get him a drink, that's my girl, she's good. And then all of a sudden you go around and ain't got a quarter. You be broke, you're all oh, Lord, help me, you praying. But when the Lord lets you up, 
You will know that God is king again. That's cool. But he said, but the thing is, when the Lord let him up, let's see what Nebuchadnezzar did. Now, skip down to verse uh, 34 and continue. I know it ain't a lesson. I'm just adding some. Be with me now. I know y'all getting crazy. But go ahead and read. At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes unto heaven. Uh -huh. And mine understanding returned unto me. What? And I blessed the Most High. And I praise and honor him that liveth forever. Whom dominion is an everlasting dominion, yes. and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And this is what the Gentiles got to understand. That's what they got to learn like Nebuchadnezzar did. Go ahead and read. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. Yes. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven uh -huh. and among the inhabitants of the earth. Go ahead. And none can, say, can stay his hand or say unto him, what doest thou? You can't say it to the Lord. How are you going to tell the Lord what you're doing? He'll snuff you out. That's what I'm doing. I'm getting rid of you. But keep reading. <laughs> At the same time, my reason returned unto me. Also, Nebuchadnezzar's reason returned unto him. See, this is when you come back into that truth. Your understanding started to be opening up. Man, it was the Lord that did all of that mm. thing for me. It wasn't me. Go ahead and read. And for the glory of my kingdom. My honor and brightness return unto me. Yes. And my counselors and my lords sought unto me. Uh-huh. And I was established in my kingdom. And excellent majesty was added unto me. Who gave it to him? The Lord, didn't he? Lord. Keep reading. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven. Uh-huh. All whose works are truth and his ways judgment. And those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. Ooh, 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 ooh. He is able to obey. And you know, guess who the king of pride is, people? Satan the devil. Well, I don't even know why I'm teaching now here. Y'all know everything. <laughs> Listen, let's go to 1 Corinthians 1 now. We're going to find out another lesson this woman teaching. This is what got me here, boy. Because the Lord said, when a man think of himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. First Corinthians 1, we're going to pick it up at verse 20. First Corinthians, this is Paul talking to these Corinthians, which is Gentile. He was an apostle to the Gentile. Let's see what he told. We're going to wait on it. We're going to wait on it. We want you to see this with your own eyes, people. Who was that brother sitting there? Okay, I ain't got to watch. I don't want that jig pull up with no pistol. I got to keep my eye on him. On. No, but, <laughs> <laughs> but now, 1 Corinthians 20, 1 and 20. Y'all know I'm from Chicago. I'm always looking out for that kind of stuff. <laughs> but I found out, see, y'all try to pull out a blame on Chicago. But you know what? I came down here to the South. That's why they call this the Dirty South. Everybody from Chicago come from down here. <laughs> I found that out. But uh, 1 Corinthians 1 and 20. Okay, go ahead. Where is the wise? Where is he at? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Uh-huh. Have not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? This is what the wisdom of this world is foolish? Because it can't get you to the kingdom. Go ahead and read. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Uh-huh. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So the Lord loved when you preach his word. But I'm telling you, young folks, I'm not saying that. Don't go to school and be the best you can be. The wisdom of this world is good for that to get you living in this world and make you good. Don't trip on that. But it can't get you to the kingdom. That's what I'm saying. But now, 22, go ahead. For the Jews require a sign, uh -huh. and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Yes, they do. You see Jacuso, he's all up under the sea. But when it comes to the word, he walked right past the word of God. He ain't concerned with that. But go ahead and read. What does it say? But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, uh -huh. and unto the Greeks foolishness. That's what they think it is, but go ahead. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. What? Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God? And you kicking against him? Go ahead and read. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Hey, I don't even know God had any foolishness, but he said it's wiser than men if he got some. Go ahead. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. That's right. Even the weakness of God, when he was on the cross, he told the Father, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. Even his weakness, he was better than me. Go ahead and read. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, 
Not many mighty, not many noble are called. Ain't that some? So he don't go down to Harvard and get his people. Mm -mm. They be regular mean, unlearned, but they love the Lord. Go ahead and read. But God have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Uh -huh. And God have chosen the weak things of the world to confound things which are mighty. What? Go ahead. And base things of the world. And the things which are despised have God chosen. Go ahead. Yeah, and the things which are not to bring to not things that are. Go ahead. That the flesh, that no flesh should glory in his presence. That's why he do it. So that no flesh can glory in his presence. The wise man said he, he did it. A fool told him what was happening. A fool can't say he done it because he was a fool. But the Lord, why did the Lord do it? So that no flesh can glory in his presence. And we're going to show you something about glory. But what verse you had not? 30? 30. Go ahead and read. Finish this out. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Yes. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Oh, that's what he wants you to glory in. But let's see what was Paul quoting when he made that statement. If you want to glory, glory in the Lord, what was he quoting? Where did he get that message from? Let's go to Jeremiah 9 and take a look at it. Jeremiah 9, see, this is the secret, people, and there ain't nothing in the new book that ain't in the old. People come to me, you know, I, I can't deal with that old testament. I deal with the new. I said, no, you don't, because everything's in the old is in the new. So if you don't deal with the old, you ain't dealing with the new. Yes, sir. But that's a big secret. See, when you talk like that, people walk away from you. You stupid. You crazy. Yeah, so let, it, let it be so. Jeremiah 9 and 23. 9 and 23. What did it say? I'm going to see. Can't you see it? I'm going to see. Can't you see it? I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't going to say nothing. Thus said the Lord, mm -hmm. let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. What? Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glory glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth that I am the Lord which exercises love and kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. Ain't that so? That's what Paul was quoting. But if you're going to glory, glory in who? That you know the Lord and understand him. Because you have really pulled off a thing. Now, quickly, let's go to Ecclesiastes 9. We're trying to get out of here now. I got about six more short scriptures. Can we deal with them? Amen. Can we stop? Can we close it up? Go play some volleyball or what? Should we keep continue? <laughs> Ecclesiastes 9 now. Hey, man, you got to have a little fun doing this thing. If you don't, you'll go crazy. Yes, sir. Cause I'm telling you, I was scared. I'm on that plane, and that, that plane dipping in that turbulence. I'm like, boy, what was this? Some dude throwing it up there. I'll be like, what the? Is this thing? What's going on with these people? Lord have mercy. Ecclesiastes 9 and 13. Let's get back to the wise man and see what he, what he said, because he got a message right here for us. Let's see, can we see it? 9 and uh, 13. I'm waiting on you, 9 and 13. I'm waiting on you. See, there's one thing good about that line upon the line. It helps you, makes you so sharp on knowing the book. Where to go, you know what I'm saying? 9 and 13. Okay, bro, go ahead and read. This wisdom have I seen also under the sun. Uh-huh. And it seemed great unto me. What is it? There was a little city and a few men within it. And there came a great king against it uh -huh. and besieged it and built great bulwarks against it. Go ahead. Now there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city, yet no man remembered that same poor man. Ain't that something? That's heavy, ain't it? I got to say one thing, too. This brother is reading that Bible, man. Yes, You're doing your thing, bro. Praise the Lord. Yes, Go ahead, man. 16. Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Yes, it is. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. Because that's the rule of thumb. When you got that word, what people do, reject you. They ain't want to be around. Some of your own friends will leave. Oh, no, no, don't come over now. I'll call you tomorrow. But go ahead and read. The words of wise men are heard and quiet more than the cry of him that rules among fools. Now, who know outside of this building that we talking about this kind of stuff in here like we do? Seems like the whole 
people should be in here. This place should be so packed we can't even talk. There's so many people in here. But the words of the wise are heard more than quiet. That's why he said, wide is the gate, broad is the way that lead them to destruction, and many there be that go in there at. But straight is the gate and narrow is the way that lead them to life, and few that be that find. Yes, but sir. go ahead and read. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. Yes, it is. But one sinner destroyeth much good. That's why we got to get away from that sin. One sinner can tear the whole house down. Now turn back to Ecclesiastes 7 now. Looked like Solomon was dead on his money, wasn't he? Ecclesiastes 7, we're going to pick it up at verse 9. Ecclesiastes 7 and 9. Okay, my brother. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. That's right, so you walk around mad all the time, watch yourself because you be turning into a fool. Don't be angry, let that stuff go. Go ahead and read. Say not thou, what is the cause that the former days were better than these? Uh -huh. For thou dost not inquire wisely concerning this. That's right, you heard him say, man, I, I sure wish I was living back then. I would have did. Lord said, you ain't wise. You might have been, been the biggest, wickedest dude I've been back then. Lord knew what time he wanted you in. That's why he got you here. Mm -hmm. You would have did no different than you're doing now. But go ahead and read. Wisdom is good. With an inheritance. Yes, it is. And by it, there is profit to them that see the sun. But this is what got me here. Go ahead. For wisdom is a defense. Wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. Uh -huh. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's what wisdom do? It gives life to them that have it. And that's what it's all about. But now... Let's see where this, the wisdom of the wisest man that ever lived, where did he get his wisdom from? Let's go to 1 Kings now. 1 Kings 4. But people, you got to go over these things. Let this be uh, an ace card in your back pocket. And the more you read, I'm talking about with every brother that come down here because this is the God's word. Ain't nobody got no monopoly on it. They coming to bring you that word. Get it. Get that word. And you know your friend will call you right on the Sabbath day. Hey, girl, come on over. I just hit the lot on that. No, no, I don't care. I'll talk to you later. I'll see you around sundown. Because mm -hmm. I got to go get the word of God. First Kings 4, and we're going to pick it up at verse 29. Let's see where the wise man got his wisdom from. First Kings 4. Is that what I said? Mm -hmm. And 29. Mm -hmm. Okay. And God wait gave... Minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Still have a few pay. Okay, go ahead. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding and seeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. What? People, can you imagine if your mind is full of the wisdom of God like the sand that's on the seashore? That boy had so much wisdom. Look here, you can't even count a, a, a handful of sand. But his mind was expanded like the sand that's on the seashore. Go ahead and read. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country. Yes, sir. And all the wisdom of Egypt. So they shoot that uh, Egyptology in the head, don't they? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. For he was wiser than all the men, uh -huh. than Ether and the Ezraite, Go ahead. and Heman and Charco uh, and Darda, Go ahead. the sons of Mahal. And his fame was in all nations round about. That's what that wisdom will do for you, people. That's why the Israel of God, man, is scattering classes all over this world, man. Because the wisdom of God is dropping again, people. Go ahead and read. And he spake 3,000 proverbs. And his songs were a thousand and five. Boy, that boy was talking, wasn't he? Go ahead and read. And he spake of trees from the cedar trees that is in Lebanon, uh -huh. even unto the hyssop that springeth out of the wall. That boy was talking. He spake also of beasts and of fowl and of creeping things and of fishes. Go ahead. And there came all the people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth which have heard of his wisdom. Ain't that some? That's what that spiritual woman would do for you. She met Solomon and dropped gallons of that water and brought her two homies knowledge and understanding. 
and she'll do the same thing for you people. This is what I'm trying to get you to see. Because there ain't nothing sharper than seeing a young brother break down that word of God. Oh, man. That is a sight to see. First Kings 3, back it up to the third chapter. Because a thing came on Solomon. And let's take a look. Can we learn something from this? First Kings 3 and 7, what did it say? And now, O Lord, my God, Thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father. Uh -huh. And I am but a little child. And uh, I know not how to go out or come in. Because when you come this thing, you got to become a child. You got to get rid of everything you knew about the word of God and become like a little child and desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Go ahead and read. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen a great people uh -huh. that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Now go ahead. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. Uh -huh. For who is able to judge this, thy so great a people? Go ahead. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. You see how Solomon went, though? He went for that, give me an understanding heart. Give me that gem to judge your people. He didn't say, Lord, hit me with about three or four billion. I promise you, I'll get these people together. He, he, didn't, he didn't say that, did he? Because what, but what he did, he showed us something. He said, seek the kingdom first, and yes, all sir. these other things be added unto yes, sir. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. And God said unto him, because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked for riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Ain't that something? How many people stood up in church and said, look here, I'd like to make a confession, I'd like a testimony, I just want to thank God for giving me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. How many times have you heard that? Mm -hmm. Not one time. Mm -hmm. Ain't that a shame? But Solomon let the Lord know here, and this thing pleased the Lord. He didn't say, see, a lot of times we praying, Lord, I'm telling you, I'm promising you, you let me hit that lotto. I promise I'll be at church 15 minutes before it started. <laughs> yeah, right. But go ahead and read. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Uh -huh. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, uh -huh. so that there was none like thee before thee, Neither after thee shall any rise like unto thee. That's how you know he was the wisest man that ever lived. But since he didn't ask for that material thing, he went for that spiritual thing first. Look what the Lord told him. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. Ain't that son? Since you didn't ask that, you asked the right thing. But I'm going to give you riches and honor, too, because your heart is in the right place. Ain't that so? Yes, sir. This is the beauty of God, man. These are the secrets that he leaves with the prophets that you can grow by. But now, let's go to 1 Kings 10 since we're here. We got two more after this. Can we make it? Oh, yeah. Can we make it? Yes, Praise the Lord. Y'all been a good, good audience today. And this brother here, I can't. Man, I thought I was a reader, but you done took you, my spot, you, brother. You my role model. Oh, man. You well, one of my role models. Well, you, you done <laughs> compassed me by leaps and bounds, brother. <laughs> but now, uh, uh, First Kings 10 and verse 1, what did it say? And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. She came to prove him with hard questions. Yes, sir. See, a lot of people try to make this into a love service. She wanted to give. She came to see what he was talking about, about the name of the Lord. That's why she came. But let's see what happened now. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train with camels that bear spices uh -huh. and very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. But she came strong and like a queen for real. She brought all kind of gifts and stones and everything for Solomon. But she asked him everything that was in her mind. Go ahead and read. And Solomon told her all, all her questions. There was not anything here from the king which he told her not. Because he had that wisdom now. Go ahead and read. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all of Solomon's wisdom, 
and the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, uh -huh. and the apparel, Go ahead. and his cup bearers, and his ascent by which he went up unto the house of the Lord. That's right, his ascent. When his he ascent. Said, he seen how sharp his servants were, what they were eating. And then when he started walking up to the temple, he had that uh, stairs facing off the sun, and they lit up with that brass. And she seen that she passed out. <laughs> this dude here, go ahead, read. There was no more spirit in her. I told you she went straight out. <laughs> and have you seen the queen of Sheba? Yeah, there she is on the floor. <laughs> but go ahead, read. And she said to the king, it was true report that I heard in my own land of uh -huh. thy acts and of thy wisdom. Go ahead. How be it, I believe not the words until I came, and my eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceeded the fame which I heard. Ain't that something? Why? Because he took some time out and kicked it with that spiritual woman from God called wisdom. But now, we got two more to go. Let's go to Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11. And we're going to pick this up at verse 29. And this is a good, 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 good advice to the brothers. Proverbs 11 and 29. Okay, go ahead. He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind. That's right. So don't trouble your own house, man. Because you inherit the wind. Just reach in your pocket and you got the wind. I mean, you, you need some dollars. But go ahead and read. And the fool shall be servant to the wise of heart. What, the fool going to be a servant to the wise at heart? Yes, Go sir. ahead and read. The fruit of the righteous, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Uh-huh. And he that winneth souls is wise. Ain't that something? Go ahead and read. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more than the wicked and the sinner. Because he's going to be repaid in the earth, too. But now, let's go to the last place. Proverbs 24. And this is another one of those jewels that the, 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 the wisdom of the spiritual woman is leaving for us to receive. It's some good advice. What we need to talk to the young people when they, you raise a child the way he should grow. And when he is grown, he will not depart from it. It's Proverbs 24 and verse 1. What did it say, brother? Be not thou envious against evil men, uh -huh. neither desire to be with them. Don't deal with them because, you know, they look like they're prosperous now they're having a good time, but they're going to have to pay for everything that they have done. So don't envy them. Go ahead and read. For their heart studieth destruction, uh -huh. and their lips talk of mischief. That's all evil men be about, studying mischief and studying destruction. But what the Lord say? Through wisdom is a house builded. And by understanding, it, it is established. Ain't that something? So that's how you build a house? With what? With wisdom and understanding. Ain't that something? Go ahead and read. And by knowledge shall chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Yes, sir. A wise man is strong. Yeah, a man of knowledge increases strength. Yes, sir. But that's good enough. But the thing is, people... Wisdom is a spiritual woman from God. And all the prophets and the apostles dealt with her. And she still got buckets full of water for those that will come. Whosoever will, let him come to the waters and drink the water of life freely. So I thank you for your time. And I hope somebody learned something. Praise the Lord. To and thank you, reader. Thank you, reader. <laughs>